Welcome to 20 Minutes of Clarity, your go-to podcast with financial information so that you can make better informed decisions. With me today, I have our co-host, Andy, the man merchant, and I am Jason Noble. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to continue our path with assets and location and cash flow with liquidity. Okay. And so we're going to narrow down. This is the third segment of the four-part series where we're going to go into asset location and liquidity targets. So like asset location. It's not really talked about too much, but this is why we talk about it. We want to bring information. So again, you can make better informed decisions. So I said location. Okay. Think about like your taxable accounts. That's one location. That could be an individual account. That could be a joint brokerage account. That could be a trust account. Right. But those are what we would consider one location. Another location would be like your IRA, your pre-tax, like your traditional IRA, your rollover IRA, your 401k, 457, 403b, that's the other type. And then the other location would be your Roth, right? And they all have different tax code laws and rules, but this is important to know those locations. To know those rules, well, we could talk about it maybe as we go through the conversation, but also you, you could just Google and learn more about those different rules. But it, it comes into that location. But then the other part, I think we're going to spend a little bit more time on mm-hmm. is going to be liquidity. How liquid and it, are these different types of accounts? How can you get access to them? And then how is this coming into overall targets for asset location and liquidity? So let's get us start off yep. talking about what I would consider a liquid bucket, Andy. Right. When I think of liquid liquidity, liquid access, easy access to money. What are some of those accounts and type of investments that offer that liquidity? Well, li- yeah, your liquid accounts are really going to be your bank cash. Um, mm-hmm. They're going to be your cash management accounts, which I've been referring to in common conversation nowadays is the bridge between bank cash and um, your everyday investment markets um, or, or to some of those vehicles. The other bucket is going to be your investment portfolios that are going to be usually holding those, those asset located assets. Um, or vehicles a, that would hold stocks, bonds, um, some of your your mutual funds and ETFs that are non-retirement. So um, it's really important, right, Jason, to note that those monies are easily, usually accessible within one, one to three days. Um, they don't have rules attached to them other than maybe an impact of what's my tax liability going to be. But, you know, if you need cash, you go to your bank account, you pull your cash, you use what you need to. Um, if you need money out of an investment portfolio or a brokerage account, it's a simple phone call to your broker and say, I need to raise cash. We talk about the tax impact, maybe if there is one. Um, and then uh, and then we send that money uh, to your account. So it's it's money that you easily have. Okay. And and do you have like a guideline of target that we should be considering? Yeah, let's do, let's define maybe the two main categories is, you know, when you're when you're when you're in your lifestyle, you're either accumulating assets. Um, or you're you're moving into a retirement or distribution phase. So those are the two big categories that we have to be aware of, at least when it comes to how much liquidity you need um, and when it comes to your asset types. But then the the other bucket or the other factor that goes into both of those is whether or not you meet the accredited investor qualification. So if you if you meet the minimum guidelines, um, you know it's usually an income based of three to six hundred thousand or three hundred thousand dollars of earned income. Um, or if you've got a little over, uh, I believe now, Jason, the rules a million two of assets, excluding your home, um, then you you get into the club. But um, I think for for those that are listening and viewing today, the idea that we want to share on lo- on what maybe some balances and some numbers to be aware of on this go to podcast that we're talking through is: Are you still accumulating assets, or are you in the distribution phase? So, generally speaking, on those, what I'm looking for. Um, is that if you're still accumulating assets, you know, having a lot of liquid assets, this should be a target. Um, if you're retired, um, or I'm sorry, if you're accumulating assets, I like to see you between the 40 and 60% range um, of liquid okay, assets. Okay, so like you're saying of, of the money that I have uh, of towards of, of my assets, having up to 60%, 40 to 60 of liquid assets, as, as I'm, let's say in my twenties, thirties, forties, as I'm putting money towards, towards retirement accounts and towards yep. growth for longer term investing. And, 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 but why would that be higher? 
right? I think I have an idea, but I want to hear the Andy, the man's merchants answer to why that would be higher. Why those numbers are higher? Yeah, 40 to 60%. Yeah, no, uh, it, it's a good one. I, I don't think this is an often, you know, this is why we're having these these conversations, these podcasts and these topics is these aren't your traditional conversations with wealth advisors. And, and generally speaking, as you're accumulating assets, most advisors are going to suggest or recommend traditional mindset is put your money into your stock or to your 401k or your IRA, which are considered semi-liquid. They're rules-based. Maybe we'll, we'll summarize that. But, yeah. you know, for a client, this is, again, for the Clear Picture Wealth Program, it's all about getting you to the optimal number. We recognize that a lot of people aren't going to be where we think the optimal number is. And so we would rather see someone that's accumulating assets into retirement um, having more access to their money through a liquid investment. That's why we strive to get clients to have more bank cash or cash management accounts, or maybe put a little less in the 401k and put more into this so that they have more control of their money. So that's why I like to see that bucket a little higher. Um, you know, of course, if you're retiring, um, that number is probably going to be a little lower um, because of distribution and assets we're working with, but that's, that's yeah, but stay, why. Can stay, stay in uh, with narrow focus on the accumulation stage. Yeah. Andy, well, I'm looking at the ratios that I have are right in line with yours. It's really because there's also, I'm, I'm contending as a planner against this debt ratio that they all had. We talked about in our earlier podcast and anyone could go to clearpitcherfinancial.com to check out those earlier podcasts or even click the link to even schedule a conversation. But what, I, what, I, what I'm getting at is like they have all this debt off to the sidelines. And what if there is a disruption in work yeah. or in cash flow? They're going to need that liquidity to then be able to pay off, pay those those expenses on a monthly basis as they find another job or have other cash flows start coming back in. Yeah, and it's ha it's so important to have to have that flexibility and that arrow in the quiver. Now, now let's transition to the target that you would suggest for someone in retirement. Now, keep in mind everyone that's watching and listening right now, that these are targets. This is not specific to you. It's just giving you a guideline so you can start looking at your own personal finances and make start making better informed financial decisions. So now on the retirement side, Andy, what would you say? For the retirement, we're kind of, we're, we're backing that number down a bit. You know, we are probably looking at a 20 to 30%. Um, again, uh, a large percentage of the assets that is your nearing retirement have probably already come to us as advisors um, in their state. Um, and so we can't go back in time as easily to to move money out of 401ks into accounts that are, are considered liquid. So we generally see those lower. You know, additionally, we don't need as much liquidity. Um, you know, at that point in time, we've usually got enough cash, secure cash flow and a secure budget. Um, our debt ratios are usually a little bit more monitored or lowered at that time. We're hoping that most clients have their houses paid off, you know, that they're not having to, to fund new vehicles on a, on a debt side. So we're OK with a little bit less liquidity um, and, and then shift them in into, um, you know, some longer term tax efficient ones. But that's a vehicle discussion. That's right. You know, and I also so I, my most successful clients, Andy, when we're working together, when they're younger, we're having that conversation over. Yes, let's put money into the 401k, but let's let's not put all the money into that. Let's diversify your location so that later on when you get to retirement, we have multiple arrows in the quiver that we could pull from and be able to make those adjustments. And um and to to something that you're saying, uh I, I earlier, like we have clients that are coming to us as they're later on in life towards towards the end of their accumulation stage going into a distribution approach and they have a lot of their money in the next bucket we're going to talk about which is the semi-liquid there's there's things that you and i focus on to then create liquidity within that within their financial plan but it, it could take time energy and effort and and worth anything worth doing is not going to be immediate yeah. Right. And so there, there, there's times where I have a five, seven year time timeline in moving money from semi liquid bucket to the liquidity bucket to meet that expectation or that target. And I think that's a really good segue into semi liquid. And uh, Andy, just uh, pretend, pretend I don't know. Okay. What is <laughs> semi liquid? Explain it to me. 
Hey, I'm going to say it in the simplest format here. There, a semi-liquid acid is something that is I, I we define is rules based, right? You know, so you're going to be what what assets to look for in your in your in your net worth statement are going to be your 401ks, right? If you have a 401k, you can't access you know access it until you retire um, or quit your job um, or have a hardship you know, withdrawal request, all of which generally um, lead to next situations, you know, could be your IRA if you're more active, including Ross, you know, Jason, you and I talk about this, you know, Ross have their set, set rules and they be, can, can kind of become liquid. But, you know, generally speaking, those are still bought to have rules based on them. Um, the other ones that that I kind of highlighted here could be cash value, life insurance, uh, annuity policies, even CDs. CDs? You, know, you think about CDs. All right, CDs. Cash. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, you know, you have a rule. If you break the rule, you pay your interest. So it's just understanding that if it's a rules-based asset, it's a semi-liquid asset. You know, we can make those easily liquid, um, but we just have to understand the rules behind them. Um, and we're trading those off. And why we like the semi-liquid bucket is that it's giving you some – immediate benefit, whether it's downside protection or tax deferral, um, you know, one of those main things uh, over overall, maybe a little, little more um, secure return, but in result, you do get lower return um, for those, for those type of products. But uh, we do like the protection bucket. You know, we don't want all of our money exposed liquidity. Um, the liquid bucket has volatility. We failed to mention that, you know, with, with flexibility comes volatility. Um, it's kind of my saying, um, so it is it is prudent that we do build in some protection, but we like to expand it beyond just people think of annuity and insurance. Um, it does build into just more of a rules based focus. And so, OK, again, I'm now in the accumulation stage and yeah. then we're going to talk about retirement in a moment, but I'm still growing my money, getting towards retirement or I'm younger. What are the, what are the targets for that bucket? Yeah, if we follow this kind of a similar number, I, I'm I'm kind of in the uh, 20, 20 to to forty percent. And again, why we give these ranges of of where they are, um, you know, is that if you've got a really good four hundred one k plan, you know, we're going to be the last ones that are going to tell you not to to contribute to the four hundred one k. But we also want to make sure, kind of going Jason to your earlier point, is that if you have debt, the last time I've ever said that if you've got a liquidity need. need and you need to, whether it's saving your house or a medical bill, um, it gets really, really hard to go to your non-liquid access or your semi-liquid investments in your 401k, your IRA, and pay all the rules, taxes, and everything else and penalties just to be able to solve. So um, again, there's a lot of other factors that go into it, but we like 20 to 40% um, that go into some protection-based strategies. And, and I'm agreeing with that. I mean, so if we have 40 to 60 percent in the liquid bucket makes sense to have that 20 to 40 percent that's going to be semi-liquid mm -hmm. now if you're an accredited investor it's probably because you're making a lot of money at this point or you saved up quite a bit or you hit it big on one investment or a couple of things else that you're doing right you hit it big also implies it's not necessarily going to be the truth but it implies that you're paying higher taxes Mm -hmm. So then putting more money into the semi-liquid bucket, especially like traditional 401ks do work, will help you with a tax liability offset, right? You, 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 you pay down the taxes, but we still want that liquid bucket because of how the tax code law treats when you need money out of these different types of vehicles, when can you access it? And then what are the tax implications or tax drag coming out of it? Right. Yep. And then. And, and Andy, you said it's such an important thing. And there's so many statistics showing that how many Americans can't handle a $400 unexpected expense? Mm -hmm. Well, if they have money that they intentionally put towards a liquid bucket with the purpose and intention towards the semi-liquid, then they're going to be able to help navigate these unexpected things that come up all so often. Right. And then let's talk about retirement now. So, okay. So now you're doing distributions you've you've you hit the plateau like you're not going back to work you're financially independent with your investments how much would be a, as far as a guideline a target be in retirement accounts in a semi-liquid i should say yeah what we're i mean what we're seeing is a lot of your semi-liquid um protection it's, it's really going to be risk adjusted um you know or risk based in a lot of my opinion but you know we're going to see that starting off higher 
Um, so you still might be in that 40% number. You know, if you're accumulating assets between 20 and 40%, you're naturally going to build up. But what our job is to try to do is to start to, to get that money liquid or move it into non-daily liquid as you hit a retirement. So I like to see that number. It's probably going to be around 30, 40%. Um, when you kind of enter the phase of retirement, but then over time, we start to see that number drive down. And a really important reason why we like to see that, whether it's a Roth conversion, right? We'll look at those strategies, it moves it again to a semi-liquid, but it's more liquid uh, in the spectrum of a semi-liquids. If we just really tongue twisted everybody listening and watching today on that one. Um, but we start to move you down. And the reason we start to look you to look to move people down from that is that when you start to consider the transfer effects of money, um, which will be covered in a future podcast on legacy wealth transfers, um, you want to be able to have assets that are more designed for more efficient transfer. And tax deferred buckets like IRAs do not provide that for you. Downside protection assets do not provide you a transfer tax. So we try to get that money to move down. Um, and, and ultimately, we like them in the 25% would be the target end goal that we try to get them to. Yeah, and so you're listening to 20 Minutes of Clarity, and where you could go is go to clearpitcherfinancial.com. You could look at other podcasts, and the reason why I'm bringing this up again yeah. is we're building a series of these different conversations with Andy and I because it's all connected. Like a financial plan can't be myopic. It can't just be this one silo. All these things have to come into play. So going into four different parts on just one segment of a financial plan, which is cash flow and liquidity, right? And breaking that down, you're seeing Andy and I draw from earlier podcasts, and you're going to see us reference this one in future podcasts. But you could go to clearpitcherfinancial.com so you can learn more. Go to wherever you get your podcasts to, to be able to subscribe. But if you want to take the next step and speak with a professional, that's where we want you to fill out your information with the form fill on the website so that we could be able to reach out to you. Now, it's our team of professionals that you will work with. Annie and I, we really work with those that are with, considered qualified clients and, and above, but that doesn't mean that the people that reach out to you are not qualified and trained by those that you are watching right now as we have this conversation. So mm -hmm. let's get into the last one, not yeah. daily liquid, NDLs. Explain NDLs to everybody, what that is and how that comes into assets and liquidity. Yeah, well, well non-daily liquids, it's pretty, pretty explanatory in the title. Um, they're not liquid, um, those, but everybody owns them, right? If, if you own a home, you have a non-daily liquid asset. If you own a business, you have a non-daily liquid asset. Uh, if, you, uh, if you have private investments because you're a credit investor, you've got that. Uh, if you've got collectibles, like you know, a really fancy electric car uh, <laughs> in today's new world of things, or, or even some of those hot rods from the day, um, you know, art, all these are assets that are going to take a unique audience to create liquidity. Um, you know, oftentimes with those assets, though, we can create liquidity through pledged access accounts. Um, sometimes we can, you know, we can we can take a home equity line out of a house if we need to create liquidity. But keep in mind, it's just they're non-daily liquid assets and um, and they usually will take, you know, uh, we always set the expectation six plus months to get to get cash out of them. Yeah. And what targets do we have for someone in the accumulation stage? Yeah, that's a harder one just to put a blanket one on there just because it takes into so many different factors. It takes in what your current income needs, what your what your tax expectations are going to be, what's your legacy wealth transition plan. So that's a harder one just to put a blanket one. That's why if you go back, the semi-liquid and the liquid kind of math out to 100%. That's right. We all know we can't have 110% of your assets located somewhere. Um, but it's, it's re that's really more of the custom conversation, uh, you know, but if you're accumulating assets earlier, if you're on the early end of accumulation, right, and you just bought a house, um, it's going to make up a big chunk of your assets. Now, keep in mind, we're not talking net worth statement and debt, so I don't want to confuse people here, but if you go off and buy a $250,000 house and you have, you know, $300,000 worth of assets, you know, because your savings and bank cash and 401k, it's going to make up the, the bigger percentage. Um, so it's really more about awareness. Now, if you're moving into, you know, retirement, those numbers should start to move backwards. And then if you're accredited, it's more strategic. So um, very custom. I don't have an answer on a specific number. Um, a high number isn't necessarily bad and a low number isn't necessarily good. So um, I hear you there. 
Well, like, okay, like, uh, let me take what you're saying and, and like, give some examples. Let's yeah. say uh, we have a, I'm thinking of a client that we work with, and he's 26 years old, and he has about $30 million in real estate investments. Well, they're not liquid, right? But that's good for him because the income that's drawn off of it on a passive income is wonderful. It's absolutely yep. incredible, right? Um, and so if we want to create liquidity there, then we could be looking at tax implications. So then, then this is where Andy and I get into tax mitigation approaches for that particular person. But are looking at just the base value and target, right? Um, like it has to be customized. So these targets across all the different types of locations are customized in the financial plan based off of where you are in your journey. But another couple, let's say uh, that I'm thinking about Andy that we work with, um, they're in our uh, early 30s and uh, they do have a home, which is wonderful. They have two, uh, two young children, but um, she, went to, uh, she went to law school and has $210,000 worth of student loan debt. So if we put so much money in the semi-liquid and something comes up with work or a life change or something with the children, who knows, right? Mm -hmm. Good job. You're saving money on the taxes coming in, but you don't have the liquidity to take care of the debt that you have, the home, the mortgage and the student loans. So for their financial plan, they have more money in their liquidity bucket to handle those things that could come up, some money in semi-liquid, and then they have whatever the value is, the equity in their home for the non-daily liquid. So these are ways that I'm taking what Andy's saying and bringing it into like examples so that yep. you could glean from it with real life scenarios and then be able to apply it to your own financial situation. But if you don't want to apply it to your own financial situation, you'd rather have a professional apply it. This is where I want you to pay attention. Clearpitcherfinancial.com. Check out other videos, scroll down, enter in your information. And that will will have a specialist reach out to you to schedule a conversation. That was we Andy. Even, hey, before you before ahead, you sign Andy. us off, you I think, sign I think, us off. No, you no. take us home, baby. Oh, you want to take me to take it this time? No, that's uh, right. I just want to. I'll take us home because I'm going to have the final word on this one. Um, you know what, Jason? The common thing that we ask, and I do encourage people. I think we should even go ahead and offer that. You know, we'll do free. We'll do five free uh, clear picture analysis on liquidity for those that contact us. Right? I mean. Just call us. There's no strings attached. I mean, we are here to help people make action and we don't want cost or concern or anything to be out of the way. Like give us a call, reach out to us as Jason entered. We'll do, we'll, we'll, we'll do five free analysis for those that, that give us a call on liquidity, because here's the common thing I've heard way too much. Too many clients are calling us saying, I got this cash flow. What do I do with it? And the answer is I have no clue, right? Until we know more about you and you got to know your buckets and which ones in liquidity, the semi to non lately liquid, all, all important buckets, your ratios are going to be unique to you. So reach out to us. That was Jason, the man, <laughs> Noble, uh, and I'm Andy Merchant. We'll look forward to catching you guys all next time.